it kind of just clicked. And I was looking for that click. And as soon as I found it, I went back to school a couple years later, trying to figure out maybe I'll go back for nursing, maybe stay in the medical field. Um, again, it didn't click. I tried it and it just didn't work. And then I started taking business classes and it just seemed so easy and it just flowed and it just made things easy for me because I really, really enjoyed doing it. And I figured, you know, I think this is where I want to be, finance. So I started working downtown at a nonprofit organization um, back in 1998. And um, from there, it's just history. I started in their finance department and payables moved on to being an accounting assistant, moved on to being a staff accountant. Now I do just about everything, payroll, staff accounting, um, financing, financing um, you name it, anything in finance, pay the bills, collect the funds, balance the books, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the year, get everything ready, get my balance sheets ready, my financial statements ready for, you know, for the small corporations that I have. Um, and get the stuff ready for tax season. And how, how important would you say your job is? How important do you consider your job is? Because, you know, you got a company and they have X amount of staff or they have, you know, a whole team of people doing what you do. But what, you know, how important is your job? Well, currently, I actually am a contractor. So I contract with um, a staffing agency. So they basically place me in different places to kind of go in and help. So I feel like I'm pretty important. Um, I come in where everyone is lacking. I come in to set up processes for these departments. I can come in and sit down and kind of see the way the process is going and fix it to make it a little more streamlined, to make it a little more coherent, um, to make it a little easier for everyone involved. Um, In a finance department, you can have anywhere, depending on the size of the company, you can have anywhere from five people to 20 people. Um, So if you're just lacking in one area, they kind of throw me in there and go, can you help, help, help us fix this? We need, we need someone to fill in so that we can find someone to train to get permanent position. Um, I'm never looking for a permanent position because I really like the jumping around. I like the different diversity that I get when I'm working in these different places. You don't want to get stuck somewhere? No, I mean, it's not even getting stuck somewhere. I think I enjoy what I do because it gives me the opportunity to learn more. I'm, mm. uh, life is an education. Every day you're learning something. So, you know, I, I enjoy it because I learn something. And if I have to sit there and do the same thing over and over again, it gets really monotonous. So, you know, you want to try to sit back and kind of look at things differently than anybody else. So you want to think outside the box. You want to go, okay, this is your basic accounting 101. This is finance 101. How about we go a little further and go, let's jump out of the box and go, let's try it this way. Or let's try doing things, your outcome's always going to be the same, but you're always trying to make things a little easier for everyone. Because when you're in finance, it never stops. A bill comes in, a bill comes in, a bill comes in, a bill has to be paid. Payroll has to be done every pay. You know, whether it's a weekly or bi-weekly payroll, you still have to get them done. You have your quarterly taxes that have to be processed. Um, You know. Speaking of taxes, you said you do taxes, you know, when tax season comes around. Yes. Um, obviously that alone is extremely important, especially for people who have no idea how to file their taxes or what they can write off, what they can't write off. The laws are always changing. Yes. So you have to just be up and on top of that stuff constantly. huh? Well, we do continuing education every year. Um, okay. It's required by the IRS to, to be an agent, uh, a so-called agent for the IRS, because basically you're certified by them to be able to process. So you're signing, the, you're putting your name on these tax returns mm, for these people. Okay. So I sign my name to these people. You know, this is something I take pride in because I don't want somebody to go, oh, well, she cheated me out of this much money. Or, you know, I try to do the, I try to expand as much as I can. I try to explain to people in layman's terms because taxes are not easy. Um, I actually have a couple clients that I've never met. So, you know, they trust me enough to send me their stuff to go, all right, Liz, it's your turn. Tax season. You know, do what you can. Let me know this is what I have new. And, you know, you always have to ask the extra question. What about this? What about this? Just to make sure that you're getting all of their um, paperwork together 
and that you're maximizing their tax return for them. So they're trusting you to make sure that you know as an understanding of, of a tax preparer to make sure that you have everything that they need to make sure that you can maximize their return. Does that make your job hard when people don't give you everything they need or absolutely they don't absolutely. meet the deadline and they throw more curveballs at you all? Absolutely. Um, that, only, that only hurts them. It doesn't hurt me. Um, I'm signing your paperwork, but I'm also signing the paperwork saying you've given me all that I've asked you for. You've you've given me you've been honest with me. You've also you as the client also have to make sure that everything that you're giving me is prim and proper, that it's not you know, you're not trying to hide something or whatever the case is. Um, I don't ever get that. I get a lot of people who are not educated with taxes. They ref- they don't even want to know about it. It's like, all right, Liz, here you go. Thanks. See you next year. Um, so, it, and this is on an ongoing basis. It's not. And I have, I know a lot of tax preparers that shut down on April fifteenth. That's the last day they're doing taxes. They don't want to know anything about anybody else unless they have an extension. An extension can go from to August or it can go to October, depending on what it is. So I know a lot of folks are, are just making sure, a lot of tax preparers make sure that they get all that in through April 15th. Now, I'm available all year. I have clients that call me throughout the year. Liz, I got an IRS letter. I don't know what it's for. Can you explain it to me? Whatever the case is. And those are, prob- those are probably one of the better um, um, uh, what am I trying to say? The better uh, offers that I have to offer people. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like benefits. A, it's yeah, a benefit. Yeah, it's yeah. a benefit of of basically me being your tax preparer. I'm not going to disappear on you after April 15th. Mm-hmm. You can call me. You can text me. You can inbox me. You, can you build more relationships me. with people. You're not H&R Correct. Block where, hey, we're only open from this time to this time. Correct. Okay. Correct. You're more so, accessible. A lot more accessible. A lot more accessible. What, um, what you know, especially now in the news, you hear about people kind of taking advantage of loopholes through taxes and um, huge corporations not paying any. What uh what what kind of loopholes are there and how and why hasn't anybody fixed them? If you if you know or if you can I even mean, try to explain it. It's it, it is difficult to explain. The bigger you are, the easier it is to hide money. Um, you know, with this this whole um tax reform of twenty sixteen that Trump put in place, it only helped the one percent. It helped um median income people very little um especially now it's even worse with the whole covid and you know everybody on unemployment um the unemployment the extra unemployment ran out july 31st you know nothing's been put in place to help those people but in the same token um for smaller for bigger companies smaller companies it's going to be a tough year for them it's going to be a really tough year so i see a lot of losses coming through Um, But the bigger corporations, with them not paying their taxes, with all the loopholes, all that does is make the deficit a whole lot bigger. Mm. So it just hurts the country um, as a whole. It's not helping anyone. Um, Loopholes, tax, the tax, the way the tax code is written. (sighs) Again, it's the loopholes are made for bigger corporations. They're not made for you and me that we don't make, you know, we make maybe a hundred grand a year and we're pushing that. So, you know, the loopholes are not made for you and I. They're made for the bigger corporations making billions of buco bucks. Um, you know, it's easier to hide the money. It's easier to say, oh, I, I made a loss. Even though I made $4 million last year, here's my losses. You know, they, there's, a, there's an expense um, that's allowable through the IRS when you own a business. So you have your revenue that comes in and then you have your expenses that go out. So, you know, when you have bigger corporations, their expenses tend to be a whole lot, a whole lot more than, you know, the regular person. Um, Their financials are written in millions. So that just goes to show you when you're looking at financials and your bottom line and you're you're in the millions and your bottom line is a negative, you got a real problem. Gotcha. Got a real problem. Now, just to switch gears real quick, um, talk more about yourself. What life events happened to you that led you down the path you're at now like what what major events kind of 
impacted you so much that you were like, okay, I need to change instead of going to be, you know, you told me that going to college, you didn't feel like, you know, you're getting it. Um, right. A lot of people nowadays are just going to school online or actually just educating themselves, sure. you know, through the internet instead of college. What back then it was different back then it was you go to school get good grades you go to a college you get you go to a good college graduate with you know high honors or whatever the case is and then you get a good job and you can retire obviously times are changing but from then when you when when that still worked not that it doesn't now but you know when it's when it worked a a lot more when it worked better back then right uh what what life events happened that led you down this course? Well, the, num- the number one life event was a, I had a child. So I had a son. He um, made changed my life completely. So I had to figure out how to make things better for him. Not just me now. It was just him too. So I had to make sure that he had what he needed. I had what I needed. And we survived, you know, this whole thing called life. This tough um, world, basically. Because I was still working on getting my education when I had my kids. So it was a part-time here, part-time there, class here, class there, whenever I could. So, you know, I'm just grateful that I got through it all. We all we all got through it all. We all grew up together. And um, that was the biggest life event change that I had. That was my biggest thing. And then he left me and went to the military. So... Um, when he did that, I had to make a big change because now I had nobody to take care of but myself. So now I had to figure that all out all on my own. So it took me a little while, but, you know, here I am. In 2015, I opened my business. I became legal, um, a legal business where I could actually get 1099s. I can actually get my, my uh, clients to kind of bill me, and I could bill them. And, you know, just to, at the end of the year, I can actually say, this is how much money I made with my business. So, you know, um, Again, is that is that why you like why did you start your business? I want to work for myself. Okay. I, I really don't want to work for anybody. I enjoy running a business. I enjoy um I enjoy what I do. I could sit all day and just punch numbers and that's just kind of what I do all day now. So I figure if I could just do it for myself, it would be beneficial for me in the long run and, and at the end of the day I'd have something to either give to my kids or my grandkids or you know, just anything that I could say I did this all by myself. <laughs> and what would you consider your biggest accomplishment? Or you can have multiple, you can have more than one accomplishment. My but biggest accomplishment. What are some of the things that when they happen in your life, you're like, wow, like I did that. I bought my own house. There you go. I bought my own house by myself, me and the kid, uh, finished raising him. So we had a really, um, we had it rough, but it was my house. I had that for 17 years. Um, I rebuilt it from the ground up, so it was tough, but got through it. And what, um, what would you consider success? Success. You know, everybody has their own idea of what success is, whether it's monetary, whether it's, uh, items and things like that. Well, but... I have a couple of things that I can say I, I was successful at. One is raising my son because he turned out to be the best thing ever. And then two... <laughs> Um, was buying my house, building it from the ground up, and actually selling it and making a nice little profit. Um, I'm pretty well off now. I'm not complaining. I'm not paycheck to paycheck. I actually have some money saved away for the rainy day kind of thing. Um, And, you know, educating yourself and, and making sure you get what you want out of life, not only what you need. I think that bare necessities are always number one. Then you can work towards what you really want. Yeah, um, I'm still working towards it. I'm not there yet. I'm not 100% there. Um, but I would like to, in the next year or two, hopefully in the next two years, I'm, I'm pushing two years, go fully 100% my business. Nice. And you, you're from Philadelphia. I'm from Philadelphia. I was born in New York City, raised in Philly. Um, so I've been here my entire life. And you said one thing you said, uh, you're not living paycheck to paycheck. That's something that a ton of people cannot understand and or fathom because growing up, that's, you know, that's all anybody has ever really done because that's all they really know. What were, what was your childhood like when, 
you know, how was it w- with you growing up? A lot of a lot of people that I've had that are on here from Philly have grown up in the struggle. Uh, a lot of them have grown up in North Philly, the bad area of Philly, you know, just on government housing or, you know, 